Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, welcome, Super Eatons Live. My name's Toby Salgado. I'm glad you showed up today. And if you were new, if you just found this show, I'm really excited for you. What we do on the show, if you don't know, we talk about building a business. We talk about building a real estate business. We bring on uh, top producing agents, coaches, and authors. Now, I got to tell you, all of you guys, um, I've been so heads down in the last four months. Uh, we've been building out the radio side of the business. I've been working on getting guests and, uh, you know, it is tough getting these guys on the show. I really never lo- bothered to look back at how far we've come. Today's episode is number 100. Now, my guest today is great. But I wish I would have kind of been planning for this, you know, and got brought on somebody like Simon Sinek or Richard Branson or Tony Robbins. So anyhow, I apologize. I'll make it up to you guys. Uh, I will tell you this. One highlight for this 100th episode is this. I get a ton of questions about coaching. And, you know, and I personally, I only take on four clients. uh, And this is what we did. We just started working with Corcoran Coaching. Now, if you haven't heard Bob Corcoran's episode, to get a feel for him, go back. I forget what number it is, but it's it's good. Um, And uh, somebody that I respect personally. So if you're looking for a coach, reach out to CorcoranCoaching.com. Now, here's what Bob has told me. Every one of you guys in my audience, he will give you, not him, somebody on his team. By the way, that dude, it charges like five grand a month and you get one call with him. Uh, I've been lucky. I, I've spent two hours with a guy this week. I got $10,000 coaching for free. Anyhow, but he, well, here's, he will give everybody in the audience a free coaching session. So uh, I, I know a lot of you guys uh, are curious about coaching. Here's how you get a hold of them. You know, you can just Google Bob Corcoran or Corcoran Coaching, uh, or you can call them at 800 957 8353 and be sure to tell them that you listen to the show. Okay, in the meantime, you are going to love today's guest. His name is Lars Hedenberg, and he has a really, really interesting business. We talk about how he got into real estate in 2008, the worst time ever, and in 2012, just four years after that, he started planning for his exit. Today, he does just under 400 transactions, and he's built a business where this guy, he only goes into the office two days a week. We talk about how he's impatient with people, how he didn't want to call anyone, and how, again, how he built his business with direct marketing. Uh, We talk about how he designed his life, and he does everything opposite from the typical agent. Before we get there, uh, let's hear it from our sponsor. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm, but how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three-pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people, and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm. They don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard, or we can send them an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content, or you can create your own. All my sponsors are white leveled. Now, I called, prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications' clients. And I talked to this one guy, and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. Today's guest is definitely a top producer. In 2012, he did 275 transactions for 60 million bucks. 2013, 300 transactions for 75 million. Today, we're going to talk about how he's getting extraordinary results and how he keeps moving the goalpost forward. I'm thrilled to welcome Lars Hedenborg. Hey, Lars, thanks for taking the time out today. 
Yeah, thanks so much. It's uh, it's an honor to be on uh, on your show. Thanks for having me. Hey, th- no, no problems. My so listen, Lars. I've given the, the audience a brief overview of your background, but maybe take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself and and your business. Okay, cool. Uh, my market, I guess I'll start there. It is uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, you know, I started in the business in 2008. Was my first full year. Um, you know, unbeknownst to me, uh, sort of the market was on the verge of a, of a meltdown and, uh, never really saw an easy path in, in real estate until, you know, really just the, the last few years or so. Um, but I didn't have any, any sales experience or anything like that. Um, just kind of, uh, went about it, you know, one transaction at a time, didn't have any short sales. Like, a you know, when the market turned, I didn't go to REO or short sales. I just kind of trudged along with general, uh, you know, retail sales and, you know, managed to build up the buyer side of my business and step away from that and then build up the listing side, mastered that and, and hired in listing people and, and then ultimately brought in sales and ops to, uh, to get me out of the business. So this year we'll, we'll probably get close to 360, 370 sides, you know, 85 million, maybe 90 million or so. And, um, I, I, I work minimally in the business. I don't have any, you know, day to day responsibility. I, I go in on Tuesdays, 14 meeting and, um, a couple one-on-ones. And then, you know, my, um, my staff, I've got four full-time staff people, a couple part-time and then nine agents, three of which are new. Um, so we're ramping them up right now. So we've got a really productive team. Average agent will sell, you know, anywhere from 40 to 50 homes. I had a guy in in uh, in May put 20 homes under contract, so we've got some some pretty pretty good stuff going on. Interesting. Well, look, you know, first of all, I mean, you know, um, what you said was you, you said that you came into this. I mean, look, I, we'll talk about the time from 2008, September 2008. Like the world was melting. We'll talk about the the market, but you got into this with no sales skills. And I, I'm looking at your LinkedIn background right now. So you were uh, you were a financial analyst, analyst for Bear Stearns, and then you worked for you were a, uh, you were in acquisitions and strategy for Curtis Wright Controls, and those are the guys who make um, uh, like um, dials and stuff, don't they? Yeah, they make uh, actuators. So every every Boeing jet, you know, the the, the flaps that go up and down when yeah. you land and take off, they uh, they make the the monster actuators that control those. Um, yeah, so I, I had a more of a um, you know financial, uh, somewhat business background, which gave me a head start to sort of build out the business. I had a you know focus on building a business, even though I was sort of learning how to be a salesperson and then you know building a team and learning how to. Uh, develop people. Um, the focus was always on building a true business, which I don't think there's, you know, as much of a focus on that as there needs to be right now, um, where most agents are, are stuck producing, you know, really forever because they, they don't have the business fundamentals down. Right. Right. So you came into this. I mean, I mean, if, if I look at your background, it looks like you have more than just a, you know, a, a kind of, um, you know, business background. You look very business heavy, which is great. I mean, look, you came into this, you build a business. And look, you know, we talk on the show, if you sell real estate, number one, this show is about entrepreneurship through the lens of a real estate agent. But if you sell real estate, you're fundamentally in retail and, and real estate just happens to be your product. Would, would you agree with that? And Yeah, exactly. And, and, and most, yeah, most real estate agents can't sort of see that um, a, a couple of things that I'll, I'll get into, you know, the industry is, is in my opinion, is going to go through some pretty dramatic changes here. And I don't know that our margins are going to be what they are forever, but as it stands now, you know, the ability to build up a real business that doesn't require you to work in it, um, is possible in real estate because the margins are so, are, are so fat. Um, and yeah, and, and most agents, you know, when I got into the business, I had to start out, you know, just me alone had my first assistant, you know, my first year and my first buyer agent, my second year. And then it kind of took, took shape from there. Yeah. But the focus has always been on, you know, more of a business aspect. Um, and you know, I went to Duke for my MBA and, um, those sorts of things. So I guess I, 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 the fundamental thing that God blessed me with is, you know, an impatience with, with people and in the real estate <laughs> business, you know, the, the, the drama, that comes along with working in buyers and sellers. It's just, I dealt with it for probably three years 
uh, and it was just it was just too much for me ultimately to bear, and I just had to get out of the business. See, and I just let me just I, I wanted um, I want to just dive into something really quickly. You know, you, you you know you you kept saying business, 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 and, and here's how I view it, and, I, and I'd love to get your take on it, Lars. Is <clears throat> A business, there's a business and a company, right? And you, you have an MBA. And again, I, I'm really curious to way you see this. But I see it, a business is like the plumber, right? The plumber who marks, you know, he 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 cleans toilets and or unclogs drink, whatever it is. You know, that's a business because if he stops doing that himself, right? Uh, you know, unclogging those, those drains, like his income stops. Now, when you build a company, all right, and you've built a company, you can step away from it and you have systems in place, you have people in place, and the machine just keeps doing what it's doing. Now, so you set out to, instead of a business, I mean, you know, you set out to build a company. Today, you only go in on Tuesdays. That's insane, man. Yeah. And so it's, I mean, it's, I don't know how I came into contact with the book, but at this point, you know, anyone who's in business knows about, um, you know, e myth and e myth revisited yeah. Michael Gerber. Yep. But it's it's fun. It's gotten me in trouble a few times because I I always wanted to work on the business and I forgot that I had no other salespeople. So I had to I had to always work, you know, combination of in and on. But I was always working on the business even if I had to work in the business. So I was always making sure that when I built a marketing system, a buyer system, it would generate the leads and, and systematically and for more sort of, you know, uh policy driven how my team would follow up with the leads and there was you know systems for checking in with the agents and making sure they were doing what they were supposed to do and their conversion points were were matching up with what I knew that I could do um, and so I always had an eye toward building out systems even when I was working um, working in the business so um, yeah and as a result of doing that I mean this like my average price point in my market is about 250 so this year we'll have a good shot of getting to about 2.75 million top line uh, and gross profits, 65%, 66%. That's the fundamental thing there that's going to freak most listeners out um, and probably get the most questions from your listeners is that my gross profits are almost two-thirds. Um, any, most teams, uh, I would say, have gross margins um, flip-flopped. So they're, you know, I'm uh, you know, I'm, I'm taking 65% to pay expenses and most teams are probably about a 20% delta there where they're, they're lucky if they have 45%, 40 or 45% left over after they pay their agents. So we have a huge value proposition for agents that are on our team. And my agents are, you know, making more money than 95% of agents in our market because they have no, you know, no guesswork on how business is done, where it comes from. Um, and there's no expenses to them. And, and all of my agents are netting more than a hundred and one guy will get to 175, um, you know, where he's making me, you know, two thirds of what he's taking home, you know, two thirds, the two times what he's making, right. I'm grossing. Right, right, right. Uh, see, I mean, look, you, you have the thing that everybody wants. This is why you, what Lars, your story is why people get into this business <clears throat> because they think that they can you know they can model you and it'll happen and look you haven't been so you got so let's talk about the timing because I want to talk about how long really it's taking you to build this now you got into real estate in 2008 we know in September 2008 Lehman failed the world I mean it was like the world was so different after Lehman failed right I mean people are pull, pulling money out of their banks and shoving it in their mattresses <laughs> people certainly did not trust in in real estate in 2009 2010 um so if I look if I think about your career it maybe started in 2010 uh, or 2011 and and I don't know any of this I I'm just I'm just hypothesizing so so tell me let, take us back to 2008 and and through the sequence of events you know 2008, 9, 10, and, and when your business, you know, that hockey stick growth, right, up and to the right. When did that happen for you, and, and what did you do? Well, it was pretty steady. So I did 58 transactions in 2000. Uh, let me go backwards. So last year was about 325. 2013 was 320. 2012 was 250. 2011 was 180. 2010 was 120 and 2009 was 60 and that's when I hired my first person. So at the end of 2009 was my first buyer agent hire. I did 54. He did like four. 
for 58 total. So 58 to 118 to 178 to 248 to 318 to, you know, hopefully 375, 360 to 375 this year. So there really wasn't a slowdown in, in the growth trajectory. It was more a function of, and it could have been just good timing, like with everything bad happening, you know, and I was still, you know, doing anything I could to make deals happen. Attracting agents, you know, wasn't the most difficult thing. Attracting good agents is something I learned over the years, but it wasn't hard to find people to, to work the leads that I was generating. And at that time it was a lot of buyer leads. So I focused heavily on buyer business in the beginning, you know, getting three, four agents productive and busy and following my methods allowed me to shift over and focus on the listing side, master that, and hand that off the end of 2011. And then 2012 is when I sort of began my exit and brought the office manager in and the sales manager, you know, sales manager was already there. I kind of promoted her and then I had an office manager that I promoted to office manager. And you know, at this point I really, you know, last two months I've only been in two days each month and oh my you know, gosh. the, the yeah, for May 45, uh, we put 45 under contract in May and I was there two days. Um, you know, and, and fundamentally I learned that, you know, give the right people a really cool opportunity and people are going to take advantage of it in a good way for their own benefits and their own drive is going to come out. So, you know, people have to want to make money and they have to have a drive to be successful. And that's the, the main ingredients of the people on my team. Okay, but but so you you've created this environment that where you're able to attract top talent. Now you so you're all about systems, right? You're all about these processes. You know that's that's what you focused on early on. How in the world in '09 did you do 65 transactions when? Because I, I thought you said you never got into short sales. You always kept it traditional. Yeah. So in, in so in Charlotte, I mean the worst. Over the time period when the market was declining and prices were going down, you know, 2008, our market too turned in like middle 2007, just naturally. The rest of the country sort of turned 2005, six, um, in terms of just sort of natural, natural cycles. Um, so we didn't have like that crazy of a decline. I think our max decline was about 20%. So there okay. were people, you know, it was still a frustrating time, you know, it was still yeah. a frustrating time where people had all their equity in a way and they, they wanted to overprice their home and the market wasn't responding, but, uh, there were still buyers in the market, you know, so my, my business back then, I think in 2000, the year I did 118 sales, I only did 33 listings. I did 33 listings myself and 33 buyers and my team did the rest. So that's the year I did 66 sides personally. Um, but we've always been a buyer centric business. It's just the last couple of years that we've been, you know, balanced, uh, this year we've probably do about 50% listings, 50% buyers. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so I'm, so, and I, you know, I, I, I make that mistake all the time. It, you know, I, I'm in San Diego. So, you know, again, you know, 2008, 2009, it was, you know, I was buying houses. I literally would look at the tax rolls. I would I'd look at the assessed value of the land and, uh, you know, on, on REOs, that's what I'd offer the bank. All cash, I'll buy the land, and I'm going to fundamentally get the structure for free. So I forget that sometimes not everybody um, look that way. Okay. Um, so so what is this thing? So you've always been, un until just a few years ago, you've always been heavy on the buyer side. So what what kind of, what did you stumble upon, Lars, that, that you were able to attract these really good buyer leads? Um, you know, most of, I mean, I, I picked up, um, Boomtown, mm, yep. um, really early. So back then it was realty generator and Boomtown was new on the scene. So now it's sort of, everyone has a lead gen platform and it's, you know, there's no real competitive advantage, but back in 2008, when I got it, I was their ninth customer, you know, so there was no commission tank and there was no, you know, conversion or real geeks. Those, none of those companies existed. Um, and so, uh, you know, I was new, I was, that was a real pretty sexy thing at the time. And it allowed me to recruit agents into it because I could just show them what it is, show them that last month I generated 150 leads, a hundred of which I didn't even contact. Um, and it was a pretty cool value proposition. And I convinced them, you know, based on my production that even if you did, you know, two thirds of my production, cause you don't have to worry about all this other crap. You know, I could show you a path to a hundred grand 
even if you're getting lower commission split than anyone else in my market, which is what, what is on my team. Um, so it's kind of, I, th- I think it was having that technology early on before that, you know, my first year I was just running, you know, direct Dan Kennedy, direct response style, um, ads on Craigslist, you know, clickable links were, were worked back then. And, uh, you know, I could advertise, you know, have a clickable image, you know, distress sales, free list of distress sales, click here and take them to a static landing page and get their contact information, make it a pretty sweet offer. And that's how I operated for my first 18 months before Boomtown came out. And once Boomtown came up, I'm, I'm like, man, it's got to be easier than what I'm doing. Um, and, you know, and then I picked up Boomtown and I've probably made a million in commission on Boomtown since, since that time. Does, does Greer know that? He's made you a million bucks? Yeah, yeah, he knows it. I mean, it's funny because I, I, you know, when I started with Boomtown, I had a personal uh, relationship with those guys that started the company. Now they've got like a thousand platforms, so I'm a bit of a number, you know, in their cog. But um, yeah, I've, I've, I appreciate those, those guys immensely. Yeah, um, I give them props every chance I can. Yeah, uh, Greer. By the way, Greer has been on the show. So, so and, and uh, yeah, cool. He's a good guy. He's a really good guy, man. I just I released something um, on, kind of on the down low, and he heard about it, and he's like, "Dude, I will, I will help you." And I was like, "That is cool, man." So, so listen. So again, we we've had Greer on the show. Boomtown is a is a tool for teams, right? In terms of cost, right? It's and I don't want to really get into it, but you know, it's it's about eighteen hundred bucks, right? That's you got to have a little bit of money to go out and do it now. Everybody, there's a chicken and egg kind of problem that people struggle with. They're like, well, I don't, I don't want to dedicate, I don't have a team, it, you know, it's just me, right? Um, and, or maybe like you, you know, I, you know, I have a buyer's agent um, and I, and, and 18, committing to 1800 bucks a month is a big outlay for you. What I, and tell me if I'm wrong, but did you, were you in a situation of you're like, okay, I'm just going to throw out the money. I don't have the team to support this, the fire hose of leads I'm going to get. But once I, you know, once I can get that fire hose, then that will allow me to go out and attract talent. Is that what you did? Yeah, exactly. So I, I did it backwards to the way most, well, now it's a little different. I mean, there are agents, single agents going out and getting these platforms and at the time, I just I had done business with a lender that sort of got it, um, and I said, "Hey, listen, this is what I'm looking at. You know, this this is the future. This is how I'm gonna build my team." And you know, that lender is still with me under an MSA. Um, you know, and that was what uh, was, yeah, so six years ago, hmm. um, we started working together. My lender and I, I have a few more lenders on the system now, but. Um, yeah, just, just knowing that that was going to be the future of my business. If I wanted a team with leverage and clarity into, you know, accountability, agent accountability and the dashboards in the back end and being able to work with a hundred times more buyer prospects leads than you could in our, in our MLS system, you know, generate one lead. The old way I did it was generate a lead and put them on a search in my MLS and it would take, you know, 15 minutes to do what Boomtown could do in 30 seconds. Right. Um, so I, I knew once I demoed that system that, you know, it, it had to be in my business if I was going to really scale things. And now, I mean, everything I do is direct response. I mean, just la- in the last two years, I've gone to more branded, but even all the expired marketing I've done, I've always direct mailed expired. I've never been much of a phone jockey, um, but I've always direct mailed and had them called me and it's worked really well. Same thing with Fizbo's. I have direct mail, you know, letter and postcard campaigns to FISBO that work really well. And now I'm doing direct mail to Geographic Farms. That's a little bit more branded, but it, it all has direct response. Dan Kennedy, old school, you know, good copywriting elements to it. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of agents just don't think about their marketing in a way. Um, and most businesses don't. Like you made the example before of, business versus company. Um, but the purpose of anything I send out is to elicit a direct response. So I'm not going to mail something to you unless it says, you know, for a free copy of my 151, you know, whatever, go to 150, you know, large 151 step system.com. You know, it's a very deliberate attempt to solicit an action from the person that's consuming whatever I send out. So I think just having that benefit of looking at marketing in a different way, I think that too, you know, really, really helped. And it's the same thing with my past clients and SOI from the first transaction, you know, I use top producer, the tool that everyone loves to hate. And I use it to communicate with my every month. I direct mail something from back 
Oh, did we, Lars. We lost Lars. Hold on. Let's get him back on the line here. All right. Okay, we're back. So listen, oh, man, I'm sure you're dropping some gold there, but let, let, let's uh, let's see if hopefully we can re-spark that. Let, let's, I want to ask you this, because so, not everybody knows this. You were talking about you know clear calls to action. You were talking about direct response. Now, people may have heard that term direct response, but can you can you can you explain what that is for everybody? Yeah. So especially as I'm uh, as I'm getting involved more in in helping agents in their careers, you know, everyone gets into real estate and they think that um, that they need to sort of work on their brand or or go out immediately and and you know ask their their friends for business and um, you know, the whole building a brand is very, very expensive and it takes a long time to do. And ultimately I believe it's, it's, it's what kills most agents. I think there's some stat like 75% of agents don't renew their license, you know, at their one year anniversary. So they're out of business, you know, four out of five agents are out of business. I may be misquoting a stat, but it's, it's some big number. Um, so what I did early on is that even before I had the Boomtown platform, I would run, and I had in Craigslist and just say, you know, free list of distressed sale homes, you know, go to, you know, charlottebankrepos.com for more info. And I would send them through a static, you know, landing page and uh, something I put words out there and the only thing they could do, and it elicits a direct response for them to take action. Got it. And, you know, I've always used elements of that. It's Dan Kennedy 101. Um, you know, I, I have every book that Dan Kennedy's ever written and they're all really, really good. Um, so yeah, so it, even in my expired, uh, letters that I mail out today, same deal, FISBO, same deal, even the geographic farms that I'm doing now, which is something I'd later on, there are elements of branded, you know, it's obviously my mug on the stuff that I send out, but it throughout it, it's all peppered with direct response elements. You know, if you're thinking of selling your home, go to this website for a free copy of this, you know, so they, they can't just read the newspaper and not be like, Oh yeah, I am thinking of selling my home. That'd be a cool guy to have. Right. Um, yeah. So, so it, it's even in my past client, that's why communication, same deal. So, so, um, this is, this is a little bit kind of going deep on this a little bit. Um, but you know, you, you have an MBA, you're a marketing guy. Clearly. I mean, you were using, if you were using back way back then using landing pages, people still, honestly, man, I, 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 I top producers, most people don't know what a landing page is or, or how it works or why you should have it. So, I mean, you're, you obviously have been ahead of the curve. Um, and I'm sure you do a lot of testing. Now, earlier you said you mentioned copy, right? Good copy. And when you send that, that uh, you can send a generic item out. Hey, if you're thinking about selling your house, you know, go download my, my, my free ebook or whatever, right? Call, call to action. Or you can say, hey, Toby, Right. So brand, you know, uh, so get more personal. Have you like, what do you, what is your experience with getting more personal rather than just generic copy? Yeah. I mean, my thing about, about me personally, I mean, I, I built my business around my strengths, um, which, you know, I, I, I've never been much for picking up the phone. So that's why the whole direct response thing even, even appealed to me. Um, most of what I do, or at least in the beginning years, you know, if in the last six years, the first four was all direct response, mostly to the masses. So, so very impersonal. Um, but the, the, the bait, uh, was attractive enough. I put a gold brick out there where people were going to respond to it. So, um, I just don't do anything in my, nothing in my business is sort of traditional where, you know, the touchy feely, like, the average agent is still like late fifties female and everything she do, she does, I don't do, you know, she, she's dropping off, you know, a pie to her past clients, you know, one pie every hour. Right. You know, right, I'm, right. I'm direct mailing 1300 people, my past clients, my sphere and saying, you know, if you want a pie, um, I'd love to have you come one, pick it up and, um, pick it up and, uh, you know, you come to the office. So everything is just done with an, an eye toward leverage and, and not getting sucked into things that take, take too much time. Interesting, man. Uh, that is so interesting. Um, it, sorry, I'm uh, <laughs> full disclosure to everyone on the call. 
that's, no, that's, that's great. My six-year-old son getting home from uh, from school and, and we're going swimming. So cool. Um, but let, let, let's go ahead and push forward. <laughs> okay, right. I mean, I have a six-year-old too, so I mean, I love it. <laughs> Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. Tons and tons of people on this show, but you are the first guy that has really come on and said, you know, I've had some people say, hey, you know, I wanted to build a real estate business, but I never wanted to put anybody in my car. You know, you are in a lot of ways taking that one step further because you're like, you know what? I'm just, I want to build a business where people just call me. I'm not going to call them. And you know what? I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to come to them. They can come to me. What I mean, that's, it's, uh, it's amazing, man. I mean, is with every business, I think that there's, there's, you certainly had a lot of talent. But, I mean, there's a little bit of luck involved, right? There's a little bit of, of that right timing. Do you think, how much of you, your business do you think it is just you being deliberate and good and talented? And, and you know, is, was there much luck in, in what, you, what you built? I don't think so. I mean, for, for a period of time, and I, I was willing to do what I know most agents aren't willing to do. I mean, literally, you know, come home from a full day of work and, and showing properties up till six o'clock and I had a newborn downstairs and at six thirty I committed to a time block on Tuesdays, Thursdays and ten to twelve on Saturdays where, you know, in addition to six other hours that I time blocked, those three time blocks every Tuesday evening, every Thursday evening, you know, I got up there and, and I had a quick dinner and I saw Anders, my now six year old, who's standing behind me waiting to go swimming. Um, you know, I, I just I was willing to do what most agents aren't willing to do. So that whole expression, you know, entrepreneurship is living your life for a few years like most people won't. Yeah. So you can live the rest of your life like most people can't. I mean, right. I see that and I get goosebumps. Um, so luck, I mean, luck could have been that I got into it when the market crashed. Our roster went from 9,800 to under 6,000 in a three-year period. So less competition for uh-huh. transactions as I was scaling things up. So I think that, that part of it actually was a blessing when I look back, you know, during, at the time, it was like, holy cow, I just left a easily six figures job, you know, to do this thing. And, you know, everyone thinks it's a joke getting into real estate, first of all, because nobody respects real estate agents. And I had to, you know, a newborn, um, you know, we were trying to have a number two, which we did. Um, so no, I don't think it was luck. I think it was just a combination of, um, the market going bad, I think was a good thing. Uh, and, you know, being in Charlotte, I think that was a lucky thing, you know, so it wasn't in like Miami where prices went down, you know, 60% right. or Las or Vegas, whatever crazy number. Yeah. Or, you know, anywhere on the West coast. But, um, yeah, I think it was just hard work. I mean, it, it's not a complicated business. It's so easy. And now it's even easier to generate, you know, even, uh, buyer leads for sure, but seller leads, you know, but it's picking up the phone. Now the big thing is that everyone wants to outsource picking up the phone. Right? So everyone is outsourcing their inside sales. And to the extent where there are agents in my market that are asking me, like, you know, who should I use for, like, what's your secret, you know? And they want to outsource and offshore their inside sales to the Philippines, which, you know, for calling past clients as a customer service call is a good idea, but for new, you know, new business dialing is just not, not effective. So they're abdicating the one thing that's so critical about the business. So that's, that's the one thing I'll always have. And my agents, I always drill it to them is that your ability to pick up the phone that's why I need you. It's not to, you know, not to take the easy business. It's to talk to new people this week that you didn't talk to last week. Gotcha. Um, I, let, let me ask you just a couple, you know, mindset questions. Cause, cause it, to me, it's, it's amazing to me that I see guys like you, um, you again, I'm a little bit repeating myself, but you know, you got into the business in 08 in 2012, you started planning your exit. Now, now, 2012, I forget the numbers you did, I think 60 million or so in, in 2012. You, and then you keep growing. Every year, you keep growing, but you are spending less and less time there. Um, it, it, what the, like, that's backwards. Again, you know, how you got it, you, when you hired Boomtown with the team. But, it, like, talk to me about that. And, 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 and look, let me say it a different way. And I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm talking way too much, and I apologize. <clears throat> but you have an ideal life 
you're making money, you have a great team, you only have to go into the office twice. Why are you even thinking about growing more? Why, I mean, why not just put this thing on autopilot, you live a wonderful life, do it for another five years and retire. And, and you, know, you don't even have to retire. Like, you, again, keep coming in two days a week or a month. Yeah, and it, it's a good, um, and I'm 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 sort of at that point. So it, it's it's at the point now where to grow much past beyond 400 transactions would require uh, probably another level of staff, maybe a couple additional hires in, in staff. I mean, I only have four full time staff members. Um, you know that that ratio doesn't jive with most people, and I only have really six productive agents because three are new, you know, three have only put like 10, 12 homes under contracts to so the other 210 or 215 this year. And we're in mid July, um, are from six people. So really, really productive. Um, yeah. So, so the plan is exactly that. I mean, there, there's no reason uh, I'm probably not going to want to grow past 400 sides. Uh, if we could do 450, you know, without hiring more, admin or more staff, more overhead, I might go there, but it's, and then it's just cherry picking and elevating our price point and staying at that mm. 400 transaction level. Got so it. yeah, it, it, the, the sweet spot is definitely there. I have no desire to open satellite offices or do the KW expansion model or grow to a thousand transactions. You know, there's that thousand transaction mark out there, but I mean, I'm clear that I want my life to be super simple yeah. and that does not include, you know, getting much bigger than I am today. Um, well, okay. okay. So let, let me, let me, let me ask you this week. Cause I, I'm just curious about the way you think. And I, I want to, I want the audience to kind of get a, a peek inside your head a little bit, <clears throat> you know? So again, you've designed your life. This is something I talk about, but people don't do, they don't think, but you, you have completely designed your life and you know, you're, it's great. What about, what about stretching yourself, right? I mean, most people have a problem with designing their life, but most people have a problem with stepping outside their comfort zones. Are you still on a weekly, daily, monthly basis? Are you still, you know, challenging yourself personally? And w- and what does that look like? Yeah, so, I mean, it's, um, you know, you have children. So my focus is just on different areas of my life. Mm. You know, so to be a really, like, a kick-ass dad and, you know, not just be the, the, the fun guy, but to, you know, I'm, I'm a man of faith. So, you know, bringing my faith into how I raise my family and being a better husband and, a better brother and a better, um, a better son. And my, my father's real ill. And so he's on his, you know, his last part of his life and being there in a way and honoring him. Um, you know, I'm starting, uh, you know, the, the consulting business as a year old. So helping other agents have, have a deep impact in their life and getting into the internet marketing part of all that. Um, so I, I work, you know, four days a week, five days a week. Um, Friday is kind of my down day to, you know, create content or whatnot, but, um, I just, I'm clear about, you know, this time in my children's life that, you know, I'll never get back, especially like four five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it's yeah. just like yeah. an amazing time. I mean, the stuff that comes out of their mouths and my you know, daughter broke her leg yesterday and, you know, seeing that and, uh, you know, having no deals going on, you know, and just being able to be with her and, you know, there's just no distractions. My cell phone doesn't ever ring. Nobody has my cell phone number. And so I'm just able to be there in a different way. So that's, that's what, what my focus is. And it's incredibly rewarding trying to figure out how to do those things. Um, my fitness, my health is a big, you know, I'm up at five in the morning, personal trainer, five days a week. Um, you know, and all that stuff is, is really, really cool. So, um, and then just, just building out, you know, real estate B school, you know, is something that's an online Academy that I've developed. Um, and it's not a sell into it or anything, but that took a lot of effort to get that up and running. And now, you know, serving this way of doing business to agents that want to have be there differently for their families and, and, um, to, to sort of give back contribution. I'm, I'm real, you know, big into contribution financially in time. I'm leading a mission trip to Nicaragua next week. Um, so there's just different things I get involved in. And real estate just isn't that fun. It's not that important, really. I mean, that's kind of the, the bottom line. Right. Well, it is, it, for, right. It, because you've gotten to that point. And, you know, and you and I don't, you know, you wouldn't have said that back in 09, right? Um, in terms of it being not that important. I mean, you, once you, you know, you've reached a level, a pinnacle, a level of success, and you can say that today. But let, let me back up for a second, because you said, and I want, I want to talk a little bit about your school. I also want to talk about 
about leads. Um, but you said, uh, you said, you know, you built this. I, I don't know what it is, but you, we can talk about it for a couple minutes. But you built this thing, and you said, I, you know, you mentioned the word serving, right? You were serving people, and I think that you know, if you're gonna whatever product you sell, right? You need to be a servant. You need to serve people, not just not just dish it up. Um, and you know. So how do you combine that with your agents, right? You hire talent, you have this machine, right? It, it, early on, it was Boomtown kicking out leads. But in order for you to be this successful, this fast, you had to have built the, like a serving type culture within your company. Um, can, yeah. can, can you talk to that a, a few minutes? Yeah, and, 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 and you're exactly right. You know, so when I was in the, in the thick of it and I was the only guy prospecting and, you know, I had those tough days where, you know, I had Andrew downstairs as a one-year-old and, I was told to go upstairs. I mean, it didn't sound as, as cool as it is today to say, yeah, real estate is not important to so you. Right. I, I, that's a, a good calling me out on that. Um, but when I brought agents on, I, I think, I don't think many people in general care, you know, that much about like someone's story. So for all of my agents, you know, that I've had on my team, um, for my staff, you know, I know about their personal situation. I know their personal goals. Um, I really, you know, have served them every step of the way. So I know that there are other teams that they can go to. I know they can go independent, but I know that the systems we built and the way my staff treats their clients is like no other um, team that that's out there. And so I think, you know, when I talk to teams now, you know, they just don't have much of an awareness of, well, tell me, like I asked them, tell me about, you know, that agent, what's their personal deal? And they don't really know. Mm. You know, and, yeah. and we, we take a, a deep level of interest in our agents and our staff's lives. We, we know what's important to them. We, we start our team meetings with a positive focus where, you know, we go one personal, one professional win for the week. And, you know, there's like 15 of us that go through one personal, one professional win for the week and why it was important to you. Um, so it starts in a very gratitude kind of way. And we're talking about wins and it's, it's upbeat and everyone knows about everyone's personal lives and, um, it's not just burn and churn real estate, which a lot of teams are set up on the burn and churn yeah. sort of model. Yep. Um, and we, you know, we survey all of our clients. So we're, um, we do the net promoter score survey. And, and so we, we solicit feedback. If the ones, the ones that don't give us feedback are the ones that probably aren't happy with our service. And my operations manager is required to call them up and get, get feedback so we can always get better because we want to serve our clients as well. So I do believe in, I think it was a book, what was it, Traveler's Gift? Have you ever read that book, Traveler's Gift? I, I haven't. I've heard of it, but I've never read it. Pretty good. It's like seven, It's like a, one of those fables, which are always just the easiest reads, but there's like seven sort of ways to live your life, and, and it comes down to sort of a servant, you know, the whole servant leadership model and right. um, personal responsibility and all that. So, yeah, I, 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 and especially in this new business, you know, my ability to deeply serve agents and know about their spouse and know about their children and know about their health and me not be fearful to call them out on their health and ask them about their relationship with their spouse, spouse and, and ask them about the time that they spend with their kids or they're on their phone when they should be with their kids. You know, that that's a sort of a, a different way to, to serve that that market as well. Got it. And and real quick, what so what? Tell me, what, tell me what you're building or what you have built, because I'm not aware of it, unfortunately. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's, um, it's teaching agents and team leaders just to do business a, a different way. So no matter where they are in their business, to have an eye toward building a sustainable business. So when you put that expired system in place, how do you keep it running forever? You know, how do you get yourself out of the low dollar productive activities and elevate? your worth, you know, so you're spending more hours of your day doing things that are worth more prospecting, meeting with clients, um, recruiting a team under you. So the, the, the end goal, the end vision of real estate B school is to have a business that you can not only ed- exit production, but you can sort of step out of and, and own a true business or company as, as you called it. Got it. So it, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, there's no training of its kind necessarily that's sort of just geared toward that one outcome. It's, it's like 20 hours of online training. Um, I do consulting as well, but um, and again, it's not a big sell for it, but it is for those interested in, in doing things a little differently. You know, I, ordered, I, 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 first thing I do is just offer a strategy session. So we can just get on the phone and chat about their business and they can ask me questions about my business and, uh, and kind of take it from there. So, 
you know, if there is a website, you know, it's larsstrategysession.com. Got it. Cool. Yeah, yeah we'll up. we'll get to all that stuff in the end. So so I want to and I, I do in a minute. I, I want to talk about, you know, you, you just mentioned, you know, a, a predictable business, a stable business and how do you know, how do you build that out where you can exit yourself? <clears throat> I want to I want to talk about two other things before we get there. Um, number one, earlier what you said, you know, so we survey our 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 clients, and you mentioned you know a net promoter score. Now, one percent of agents maybe know what that is because you know not not even all tech people know it. And again, right, you, you're using net promoter score. Back in the day, you were using landing pages. How Lars? How are you like really cutting edge on? You were cut. You're the you were the ninth person on Boomtown. How are you cu- on the cutting edge of all this new stuff where people are just you know they have no idea. You know, I, I think it's it's funny. I mean, I, I was you know I engineering undergrad and I went to Duke for my MBA, but it, it's only when I started reading um, reading books and different books that exposed me to different things. Um, you know, like net promoter score, I and mean, you can Google it and get all the information in the world on it, but like raving fans, ultimate sales machine, Chet Holmes, mastering the Rockefeller habits from Harnish, um, you know, Dan Kennedy, time management is a big one. Business success, sales success by Dan, uh, Dan Kennedy. Um, there's probably a dozen books, Darren Hardy. I've done his living your best year ever. Mm. Anthony Robbins. I've been to all of his stuff. Um, I mean, all of this stuff is like all the Jim Rohn and, you know, Dennis Waitley and um, some of those things are like almost free now. Like they give away the like 2011 Jim Rohn weekend for like 97 bucks for four days of training. Um, <laughs> there's so many things out there that are, it's just ridiculous. Like I don't spend any time listening to music. I've always got stuff like that going on. So I've learned more in the last six years than every bit of all my education, you know, combined probably times 10. Yeah, because it's all practical stuff. You know, it's, it's you can apply it to your business, you know, straight away. Um, and most agents don't just don't they don't have that big vision of of having a true company, as you called it. And so when they're operating, they're just doing tasks and they're not building a system behind it. Right. You know, so if something goes wrong, I want to say like, what what could we have done earlier, and what what action plan step could we have put in top producer where we didn't get that wrong in the MLS. You know, um, and it still happens today where we get something wrong and we change something. We go to a plan or a checklist ahead of it and make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Um, you, oh, so, sorry. Yeah. So, I just, you know, I mean, I love that. I, you know, you're always learning and, uh, you know, and look, that that's why this show. I mean, you should listen to my show. I mean, you know, we can all learn more stuff. And, and, and you know, for the people, my audience, I mean, how much I mean the value they're getting from the time they're spending with you today is, is amazing. Uh, and, and look, here's, you said you read a lot of books and I will say, I will ask you this. I mean, I, I have my opinion on it. If you're in real estate, you shouldn't just be reading real estate books. You should, you should be, you know, at all, you should read stuff outside of this, the industry because it will give you a different perspective. You will learn new things. What's your take on that? Yeah. It, yeah. And it's, 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 it's more important because there's nothing Really, I mean, just lately with Keller Williams focusing focusing on you know team expansion, and I mean, obviously, you know, Keller Williams has done some pretty good work, but there's so much information available outside of real estate that just hasn't made its way in our in our industry. Um, I'm looking at my my books here, and I've got every you know every business book you could you could ever want. But I, I mean, I'll I'll, I'll pay a thousand dollars for time management. You know, Darren Hardy. Right. Um, time management course. Um, I've gone to conferences, you know, Dan Kennedy Info Summit and business, you know, his his summits, um, which are valuable. I've done Strategic Coach, which is just training, business training for entrepreneurs. Um, everything to do with Tony Robbins. I think I spent like seventy five grand. Been to Fiji twice. Oh wow. Um, yeah, you know, I spent. I, I documented it's about four hundred thousand dollars I spent on. 150 on real estate training. I've had about six personal coaches and six other sort of systems and probably about 250 on just personal development stuff like Dan Kennedy and Evan Pagan and uh, Brendan Burchard and, and those guys. Um, and all of it's worth it. All of it's 10 times return. You know, it's um, so, yeah. So I, I think, I think it's just looking outside of the real estate industry and also just kind of your BS meter has to be so high on everything you hear now, every agent's like, this is working really well. Like Facebook ads for seller leads 
is where it's at, right? I generated 7,000 leads last weekend and I converted none into a listing appointment, you know, and it's, it's like everyone goes out and gets that system and it's just a complete shiny object and right. the time suck and it, it doesn't turn into anything. So I think it's just having a pretty healthy BS meter and just knowing that fundamentally there's only four marketing pillars that I focused on. You know, it's buyer internet leads, yard marketing, farming, which is expired, physicals and geographic and past clients and sphere. And that's all I really do. So it's just keeping my business simple and not chasing different technologies. I've used top producer for everything, uh, Google apps. Um, and that's basically it, you know, and like, uh, you know, a boomtown. Right. Like three technologies kind of run my whole business. So and we're going to start wrapping up here. I know you got to go swimming with your six year old, but um, you so you are not afraid of spending money on your personal development. And I think most agents are like they don't want to do that. I, you know, I don't I for me. I mean, that's what I see. I mean, I feel like, you know, agents don't get it or they don't, they don't think the value is there. Give us a guide, you know, in terms of let's say that I make 50 grand or 100 grand or whatever. What percentage of my net income should I I devote towards personal development? I've always had it at, you know, in, in the beginning, you know, I signed up for a it was a thousand dollars a month and I was brand new to real estate. And so I didn't have, you know consistent closings. Um, I think there was only one month in my career that I had no closings. So, you know, I got up and running pretty quickly. Um, but I, I spent a thousand bucks a month for 12 months out of the gate on coaching. So, uh, cause I knew they were going to get me there quicker and faster. And, you know, in most markets, I mean, the average commission check is six to, you know, at 200,000 to, you know, some markets are 9,000, some are 12,000 average commission checks. Mm -hmm. So to spend, you know, a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a month, you know, when it can, you can get there quicker and you can be more profitable. It's just, it really comes down to, you know, yeah, I, I actually don't understand it because I'm sort of a, a personal development junkie. Um, but you know, people that aren't willing to invest or they're like looking for the, 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 the quick fix when there really is none. Um, you know, I, I, I just believe in it, you know, and, and that's, and that's why I got into the space, you know, because I, I think there's, there can always be an improvement on what's out there. Yeah, I agree. And, and so again, we're going to wrap up, but I want to, so you said that there's no quick fix. There's no silver bullet. And I agree with you. I, I, I 100% agree with you, but I do think there are some things and, and, and one thing that you're utilizing, right? So you were early on, you were heavy on the buyer side, you know, and you had Boomtown, but you, uh, uh, as of a few years ago, that kind of, you found equilibrium and now you're going to be at a 50, 50. What is that thing that got you? Because I think I know what it is, but what's the thing that got you uh, to pick that the the listing side up to match the buyer side percentage amount? Yeah, so it definitely was. You know, once I established my team, and uh, I guess it was the year. I guess it was January 2011. So I, I forget what year that was, but um, I did shift to, and again, it's direct response, but radio. So. Radio at that time for me was like Boomtown was when I picked up Boomtown. So I didn't, I probably wasn't at the point where I could afford it or I should have been able to afford it, but I did it anyway. Got it. Um, and that took me from probably 20 or 25 listings to, I remember it was like 92 listings at one point. Um, the market wasn't that great the year I was doing it. Um, so that it was easier to build up, you know, listing inventory because the listings weren't flying off the shelf, but my involvement with rate and Matt Wagner, I mean, had a big, a big impact. You know, we just added a, a really big station here. Um, our push for 400, I think is going to require a little bit more of that type, um, that type of exposure. Um, and some of it, you know, it's, it's, there are direct response elements to this. So we definitely keep a direct response, but there aren't many people that haven't heard me on the radio, um, you know, which is, which is pretty cool. So when I do the expired, when I do the FISBO, uh, even when I do Boomtown, you know, or I do a, a geographic farm, you know, people are attaching that, you know, oh, that's the guy I did F3. We have F3, which, which is a Christian based, uh, fitness group, fit, fitness fellowship and, um, faith, I think are the three F's and, uh, they give these weird names, but at the end of my first session this weekend, 
you know, they didn't know my name. Is I said Lars, you know, I do real estate here in Charlotte, and um, he said, oh, you're the guy on the radio. You didn't give the guarantee, and you know, so and that's a guy I'd never met before. Um, so yeah, so, so definitely having that has definitely boosted the, the listing side, but also being in the business. You know, my first transaction when that person went into a database that I marketed to consistently since that first transaction. So every year, this year, 40% of my business is path client and SOI. Last year it was 30, the year before it was 25, the year before it was like 20. You know, so I have a bigger past client, 1,200 past clients now, 300 sphere that I care about. Um, and I market to them every month for the last six years. So fundamental, you know, business database kind of thing and never living going that. Got it. And, and and for radio, you know, again, I'm just what percentage? You know, forty uh, percent is your past clients and SOI. What what percentage would you contribute to radio? Um, I think right now, I mean, we've got about probably thirty sides out of two. You know, so fifteen percent. So it's not it's fifteen percent of the total business, but maybe thirty percent of my listing business, twenty five percent of my listing business. Got it. Cool. Um, yeah, so it's so it's it's definitely you know the ROI is always a tricky one because you know you need to get a, a six months to a year into a station before the ROI really sort of makes any sense. Um, but you know it's it's going to be the way we get from three hundred and sixty this year to four hundred next year probably. Got it. Okay. Um, again, um, before we wrap up, is there uh, is there something that you know you, you were talking earlier about building a predictable business, a stable business? Is there you know what do you, do you want to talk about any of that that you teach that you know that you when you are serving the agents in that your new uh, project and what is it called again? Uh, well, I mean the, 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 the sort I'm founder of the real estate business school. I mean, it's, so it's called real estate B school and it's just, it's bringing basic business fundamentals into the real estate arena. You know, with my, with my team as the, as the framework, what I was able to do and looking back and having the connect the dots ability, you know, of having done what I've done and putting the framework around it. So it's, you know, it's an online academy and uh, basically teaches real estate agents to build a sustainable business, one that's based on profits and not most of these teams, you know, aren't profitable. And so it's, it's value based commissions for your agents, you know, so keeping your gross margins, you know, at, at levels that they need to be. Um, and it's just, it's in, it's giving agents the ability to get into real estate um, but not have to work with clients. And so giving them that path, so it's less painful than it was for me. And now I can serve my community and serve my family and my wife and God in a different way than I'd be able to if I was still selling 60, 80, 100 right. homes a year, yes. personally. You got your life back, man. I love it. I love it. And yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. plug it all in a minute. Here's my last question I ask everybody. And, I, and this is going to be interesting for you because you're a giant personal development guy. But I, uh, I imagine this. Here's the question. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks, Lars. What book should I go buy today? Mm, 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 mm. There's probably... Um, I want to say... I could say like three or four. Um, but I want to say... I'm going through my stack here. It's a Dan Kennedy book. It's either sales success or business success mm. or, or time management. So it's no BS. Um, if you're just new to real estate, you want to pick up the sales su success because that's just kind of getting things going for you on the sales side. The time management is just awesome. I think you could probably buy two of these for $25. So I would say buy two of them, but th these books are, are game changers, especially the time management for entrepreneurs. You know, if you're a true entrepreneur and you want to get out of production at some point, even if you're in the midst of it, the second edition of the no BS time management for entrepreneurs, I think is, is something that most people will never understand this level of time management and just, you know, and, 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 and tracking stuff down to what your hourly worth is. And, yeah. you know, once I changed my hourly worth in my mind to a thousand bucks an hour, you know, it, it took a whole bunch of stuff off my plate and let me hire even an additional layer of leverage into my life that I didn't have, you know, even when I was just working in the real estate business. So really, really cool book. Awesome. Well, listen, they don't even have to spend 25 bucks. Everybody, you can go get a Dan Kennedy book for free using our link, audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. 
Hey, Lars, I know, look, you, you spent a bunch of time with me. I, you know, I owe you a thousand bucks. That's what you're worth. I appreciate you coming out. Um, you know, everybody, this is a great episode. Everybody's going to want to say thank you. They might want to ask you a question. Where, you know, plug some of your stuff. Where they, can they go? Where can they reach out to you? And, and thank you for spending, you know, this time with us. Yeah, I'm, I appreciate it too. I mean, it's been, it's been a good, a good time. I apologize for the technical glitch there. Um, I think the best way, you know, for agents that kind of what I talk about resonates with them. And if you're serious about getting on the phone and, and seeing if, if I can help you, you know, do what I've done with less mistakes and, and, you know, even quicker than I have, you know, jump on LarsStrategySession.com, L-A-R-S StrategySession.com and simple registration process. You can book literally right into my calendar and get live on the phone with me. So uh, those for, for agents that are really interested in, in doing things differently and they see the opportunity to build a business where most agents are going to be stuck doing production, you know, until they're 75 years old. If you right. want to do it differently, grab some time with me and we'll talk, talk about it. LarsStrategySession.com. Got it. Do it, guys. You know, I don't know what it costs, but whatever it is, invest in yourself. The strategy session is free. Get out yeah, of here. strategy session is free. You yeah. get on the phone yeah. with people for free. Yep. I get them. Yeah. If you're serious about growing your business, I mean, obviously oh. at the end of the call, you know, we're going to chat about, you know, we'll put a plan in place, but then we're going to chat about, you know, me helping you execute the plan. Um, and, you know, so there's an opportunity to, to work in one of my um, different programs I have, but yeah, I get on the phone with people and it's, it's, it's good stuff. You know, we, we do a lot of work in a, in a 30 minute strategy session and there's no obligation at all. Oh man, dude, I feel bad for you. When this thing goes live, I seriously, seriously feel bad for you, dude. Well, luckily I only, I block out, you know, Fridays nine to one. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. So it, it may, it may fill out my calendar for, for a few months, but it, it won't take all my spots. Got it. Okay, cool. Hey bud, I want to say thank you. So I appreciate it. And literally, really Lars, you know, I, every now and again, I'll have somebody like you on the show that, you know, that just brings it and I, I you know I, I really wish we could have had more time and you know maybe we can do a, you know an, a, a second episode just, you know somewhere down the road but I want to thank you personally for me thanks for taking the time out and coming on yeah thanks so much Joe. we appreciate it you got it all right see you pal all right buddy thanks yeah. so much let's go Set concentrated power.